This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Yeah. Oh, that's Aloha. right. Aloha. How you doing? Gordon of the Techs are here. Hibachi Talk, another exciting episode of Hibachi <laughs> Talk. We've been out, not on the air for a while as um, the fun meister, Rick's my co-host here, and I have been doing a lot of traveling this year. So, yeah. under my arm, sorry. We, yeah, we found our way back, though. We found our way back. Yeah. We're back for a little while. That's and, great. Uh, um, but our show uh, is going to change a little bit. We're going to be down to two shows a month now. Uh, the middle of the month and the end of the month. Don't tell my wife. I'll have more honeydews. Yeah, so I can't yeah. let her know because no. I'm still going to show up and do my regular thing on yeah. about, on Wednesdays because it's kind of like my one day of the weekend. Yeah. So, uh, and then um, and lo and behold, our guest calls us at um, 30 minutes or so before the show. Emergencies come up, and uh, Sam Moku, who was supposed to appear with us, um, he's the acting athletic director at Hawaii Pacific University. Yeah. Um, was going to join us in talking about our theme today, um, which we're going to continue with, which is a yeah. concept that's being thrown out there, an annual university intrastate baseball preseason game. How's that? Say that <laughs> five times yeah, fast. I know. But, you know, that, that could just be so much fun. It could be you a know. ton of fun. Yeah, and I think it would be fun for the players but also for the fans. For the fans, you the know? families, yeah. Um, yeah, and a whole number of things. And you and I, and this is, this is really in its um, infancy. Um, it's just it's discussions. I don't even know if all of the universities are even talking about it at this point. I know why Pacific University is because I've been talking with them with Sam, yeah. as, an, as an alum. And I, we're just going to do some, some feeling right now to see if this could possibly get some trends at, Transaction? No, traction. 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 <laughs> so pull up a chair, grab a libation. We're going to have a little chit-chat about that. And if you've got any comments, you can give us a call at 808-374-2014. Send us an email yeah. um, uh, at the ThinkTech uh, website if, you have, if you're really interested in seeing more about this. I think, I think like you said, it, we got some ideas on how this could be <laughs> yeah, a lot we, of fun. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it'd be <laughs> and, and maybe, you know... After after you hear some of our thoughts, maybe you have some thoughts too. Right, and you know, just e email us at yeah. Think Tech. And yeah. we, if we get a, I think if we get a groundswell of individuals that think this is a good idea. We might be able to get some kind of committee right. formed and so on, and start and start talking to the to the heads of the universities yeah. and such, because uh, and see if they'd be really interested in doing this. Because you and I were talking, we're thinking about uh, University of Hawaii, Hawaii Pacific University, BYU, and University of Hawaii Hilo. Yeah, and yeah. all their baseball. They've got baseball teams, and and see what we could do um, with that and, and such. Yeah. It could be a fun weekend. It could, and some of the other sports have had, you know, inner, what interscholastic, you know, volleyball. You know, I think Basketball. BYU is, you know, and uh, yeah, and BYU. And, and HPU, I think they used to play that. Don't know if they still do. Yeah, but, but yeah. Because we don't have, if you think about it, what? So that would be what, intercollegiate, I guess. Yeah, oh, maybe. intercollegiate. Collegiate. Yeah. There's, a, yeah, there's yeah. the term. That's, yeah. see, I, you're, see, you're a college graduate. You know <laughs> this stuff. So um, intercollegiate a type of an event. Yeah. We really don't have a thing that we, we um, wrap our hands around that much anymore. I mean, uh, high right. school football is huge yeah. here, as we all know. Yeah. Um, and there's a number of other things, but nothing that becomes a annual event that people look forward to because of things that have happened. Yeah. You know, we've lost the we've lost the Pro Bowl. Yeah. That's gone. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, what is it we can we can do to yeah. get this community interacting Still, and yeah. having fun yeah. and, and things like that. So and, yeah. Bringing bringing the communities all back together uh, and having fun. And having fun. Oh, and I could just see it. So but since we're we have we're, we're thematic and we're you know, we're <laughs> gonna talk about sports. I, I want to talk about sports a little bit, and, and it's um, two years ago I stopped watching NFL football because of this not standing for the flag and the respect that I believe it deserves. And, you know, I was, you know, I'm an immigrant to this country, yeah. and I stand to, for this flag, um, and I, I believe for everything that it, it's founded on. So I'll be real clear with it, saying that up front. But what's gotten to, got to me is the, is the hypocrisy of the NFL. Yes. I mean, that was really what started started to get me um, 
when I started gathering information on certain things that happened, the NFL has, has reacted um, negatively to it, or the, or the players' union has not stepped in on it, but they'll step in on other things. Yeah. So it's just it's, it's the hypocrisy. I got a couple that I want to bring up that, that kind of um, will we'll tell you this. And some will remember this. Tim Tebow back in the early yeah. days. Yeah. When Tim Tebow came out, and he would kneel, um, he would kneel for each game to pray. Yeah. Right? So, and I'm not a big religious guy. Your, your family, on the other hand, are more religious right. than I am, right. Right. Um, more faith based than I am. Yeah. But I had no problem with him doing this. I yeah. mean, if that's what he wanted to do from his faith was concerned, he wasn't kneeling in disrespect for the flag. He wasn't kneeling to send no. a message. He was there because of his he wanted faith. To, yeah, he wanted to take a knee yeah. and have a prayer to. His God. His God, right, and, 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 and do that. And ask for support. Right, and guess what? The NFL said, you can't do that. Yeah. So they said, you, you're not allowed to do this, and they stopped. Then he had the, the eye patch. Remember John 3, 16, I think it was. Oh, on. yeah. Yeah. I underneath. was underneath his, his eyes kind of written in there. Written in there. They, right. made, they made him take that yeah. off, too. So, okay, okay wait a minute. So if it's fake. Because you, you get, a lot of players will just have the. Just the black. Yeah, the black in there. So he. So. Use use he, that as a and then put some John three three sixteen yeah John three sixteen and in just there. added that right in and and that and that's it. but guess what they made him take that off now last last year at a college football game I was watching and I'm not going to name who it was because I really I'm pretty sure I'm right but I didn't get a chance to do the research so during that game and many people watched that game and they they've talked about it afterwards of the they had to replace the quarterback and they brought in this young man. He was a fre is a freshman, and I noticed when he came in in the second quarter, I believe he had a religious oh. um, statement on the right. shading right. underneath his eyes, and I looked at that and I said, and I said, you're not going to see this in the second half if this kid's playing in the second half. Yeah. And sure enough, he came out in the second half and it was gone. Yeah. Totally back to gone. the shading. Just back and to the shading. There was no shading. It was like everything oh, gone. was gone. Uh -huh. So. Um, so my my guess, and I have no way of proving this, is my guess. TV was watching it. The word got back down into the locker room. You've got to take this off, yeah, yeah. and that happened. So so that was a college one, not necessarily the NFL. But in 2013, there was another one that happened, and a lot of these a lot of this stuff hasn't done a lot of press. But Brandon Marshall um, was, was fine for wearing green cleats. No, <laughs> he was fine for wearing because he wanted to raise awareness of people with mental health disorders he wanted to bring that and that was that was his, his statement yeah. his way of doing it with not disrespecting the flag or any of those kinds of things right no nope, they find it the NFL find him for this so again I'm sitting here going that's why I don't watch the NFL anymore man eh, they don't get my money so what they really care I've been to two Probably, live yeah. NFL games in my entire life um, and that's that, yeah. that'll be it that'll never go again um, then um, a guy that you wouldn't think you would think of, 2014, Robert Griffin III, the third, RG3. Yeah, RG3. Remember RG3? Yeah. Um, he entered a post-game conference. So at a conference, you know the post-game, were they that? Right. He had a T-shirt on that says, no Jesus and no peace. They made him turn it inside out. And, and, and he couldn't yeah. wear it. They made him turn it inside out. So it wasn't, it wasn't an issue that he couldn't wear a T-shirt. Because I think in basketball, there are... What uh, dress codes? Dress codes, yes. For for that, this wasn't a violation of the dress code of a dress code. It was a, in violation of his speech. Yeah, he, he, the, this, the, to me, this is freedom of speech. Yeah. Is it not? Right. right. And he's he's good at there. Or, to or freedom to, of religion. Or freedom of yeah. religion. And he's going to talk about um, uh, the game and what went on. And he happened to have that on his shirt. But um, um, the, the NFL uniform police, as I call them, they made him turn it on inside out when he when he came up and and talked. Now, I'm thinking now in retrospect, you can always think of these later. It would have been good if, if he just said, you know, well, guess what? If I can't go up there with this shirt shirt on, then I'm just going to go up. I can't go up, go up. Yeah. and I'll just tell them why I'm not going up because I have a shirt that says, you know, something uh, along these lines. Um, so, and I can, you know, there's lots of people. Well, what if someone has something with hate speech on it? Well, that hate speech is. Is hate speech, and yeah. that's not something that anyone should condone. Yes. Right. So, so let's don't play around with those yeah. kinds of things. So then, in 2015, D'Angelo Window Win Williams, D'Angelo Williams, he was fined for wearing um, "Find a Cure Eye Black" for breast cancer awareness. 
He was fined. For, for, for breast the cancer cure, awareness. awareness. And he was fined. Yeah. Now, how many... And, but, you know, there's, there's what, one, one weekend a year that the NFL team wants you to wear pink, pink gloves, gloves, pink shoes, shoes, you know, pink yeah. whatever, you know, on that. So, so if, it's, if it's NFL yeah. sanctioned, then you almost have to wear it. But if it's not well, NFL, what if I wanted to listen, yeah, yeah. I'll, no, what, I'm then going to you, protest. You I'm not going to wear pink. Yeah, as a form of protest. Right. Duh. I mean, <laughs> I'm just again, yeah. just trying to figure out yeah. this this thing. Um, again, in 2015, uh, William William Gay was fined for wearing purple cleats to wear to raise awareness of domestic violence. Now, not like the NFL has domestic violence problems. Oh, gee. Oh, heck, no. Um, we don't want to not, go there. Not them. No, don't no. go down that path. Um, but, you know, the, the, the thing is, again, they find him for wearing those purple cleats to bring an attention to uh, the, the, the domestic Women's violence. Vi domestic violence. Yeah, and yeah. That, needs to, that needs to be, in, be something that we um, address, make conscious efforts of right. people understanding this. Um, it's obviously been a problem within the NFL for a number of years. And now it's showing up in the, in the uh, universities. I mean, yeah. see the things that, you know, his, all the histories and things that are coming back beyond domestic violence now that, that's happening and yeah. those kinds of things. So it's really getting pretty, pretty amazing. 2016, NFL prevented Dallas Cowboys from wearing a decal. So and the NFL prevented the entire Dallas Cowboy team from wearing a decal on their helmet in honor of the five Dallas police officers killed in the line of duty. Yes. So Dallas wanted to recognize these, these first responders with a de uh, decal or decal, depending on where you're yeah. from, um, for those officers. NFL said, no, said, no you, you can't cannot do, do that. It's not approved. Not approved uniform. to do this, which is going to keep bringing me back to this thing. You stand, kneel, or whatever for the flag. I right. mean, it's just, it all keeps coming back. Um, then um, in 2016, the NFL threatened to find players who wanted to wear cleats to co commemorate the 15th anniversary of 9-11. So the NFL threatened to find players if they wore cleats to commemorate 9-11. Yeah, commemorate. Commemorate yeah. And then there's another one. So, so, so they've, been, they've been very consistent up to a point. Up, up to a point. So now here we are, and you know, and, and so the beginning of this year—not the beginning, but when the, before the season started—NFL um, uh, said that they were going to pass a rule that uh, everybody had to stand. That this was what you do uh, in yeah. respect to the flag. Um, the owners said yes. This is what we're going to have happen. And then the union got involved and said that they did not have an opportunity to voice. Um, their opinion on it because it was a, a union issue or a labor issue. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now here we are back again. It's just a mess. Some yeah. are standing, some are putting their fists up, some are remaining in their locker, some are kneeling. I mean, it's just, and so it's ask me why I don't pay attention to it is because if you want to um, send a message and you're making millions of dollars per year as, in this, as an employee, yeah. then take some of your money and fund other efforts. You can still exactly. respect this flag. Yeah. And you can you could prov you could provide that money to an organization that supports the uh, what you're trying to what you're trying to support. Right, what your cause is. And yes. you mentioned and LeBron James the other yes, day. Did yes. Say. So what was yeah. that? What did he just well, recently do? Yeah, he just you know built a, a large school for inner city kids at risk, and he did that in uh, Akron, Ohio. And, you know, what a great thing to do. What, what a great way to, you know, to really, well, to give back to the community and to have a, um, you know, a, a, a thing that you, you personally were involved with. Right. And it's not just, you know, for, I got to give it to LeBron. It's not just, you know, easy for him to talk about it. It was Big money. Yep. It was millions of millions. dollars. And, and so he, he didn't really could afford it. But, yeah, yeah. But some could not. Don't right. have to spend it. But he did. Right. So, but he went all in for it. It wasn't just oh, this looks good. No, this doesn't look good. 
this is I put my money into yes. it. And yeah. I see putting, I see put his money or his mouth in. Mouth in. And, and exactly. And so that's my com so. that's my commentary for the first half of this show. Is yeah. like you know this hypocrisy. I you know. I, I'm up to here with it. I feel like I got my life back, though, not having to worry about football anymore. <laughs> there you not, go. It's so good. There you go. Um, I, I still concentrate on college. I still like college football games and so on. Yeah. But um, not having to deal with, I don't care. Yeah. And you know what? I have a number of friends that don't care anymore. Anyway, we got to take a break. We, we just burned through the first half of the show. Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about our intercollegiate, intercollegiate, yeah, yeah, word, intercollegiate. intercollegiate uh, baseball yeah. preseason weekend we're having an idea on. So uh, Rick's the Funmeister, Gordo the Texar. We'll be back in about a minute after we pay some bills. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Do you want to be cool? me if so watch my show on tuesdays at one called out of the comfort zone i sang this song to you because i think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool and i want you to come watch my show where i bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier happier build better relationships and make your life a success so come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome to Hibachi Talk. I got Rick's the Fun Meister here joining us. Good to be today. back. Nice to have you back from our travels. Yeah. Again, as we mentioned earlier, if you want to call us at 808-374-2014, you can do that. Um, or you can email us um, at uh, the Think Tech uh, Think -tech. website. Uh, you can go to Hibachi Talk. Yeah. At, Outlook.com and send us an email there if you want. Um, you can actually know, listen to Think Tech shows, listen to, not have to watch them. So they don't have to see <laughs> our pretty they faces. They don't have to see me. Yeah, yeah, so our pretty faces are no longer there. You can go to the Apple and download it and, and do it in the car when you're driving home. From there you work. go. So there there's go. all kinds of options as this entity uh, continues to grow and evolve. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about this. It's kind of fun, right? So and, and the, the concept here is. We find four university teams in Hawaii, which we kind of identify do the RUH, UH Hilo, yeah. uh, BYU, BYU, and yeah. HPU. Yeah. Um, we put together a uh, round robin, two day, um, possibly three day, uh, long weekend yeah. um, baseball event um, to raise money for the schools yeah. um, and to get families together. And this, this town loves rivalries. Yes, they do. Right? We, yeah. the, the rivalries that we could have. And then the things we could do to tweak the game so that the NCAA doesn't get yeah. it, its rules all concerned and so on. Because right. it just becomes a fun event. Yeah. And it, and it should be, you know, it should be fun for the university. It should be fun for the students, the players, the families, and the fans. Yeah. You know, and it could be... It, he, Listen in on this one. You know there are just some crazy ideas. There's crazy ideas. You're gonna you're gonna scratch your head. You're gonna think, oh man, what what are these? And some of them, you know, they're just gonna be laughers. Yeah. You're gonna have just a great fun time thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying, you know, things that we're thinking thinking about doing you know, that that could happen here. So again, to make maybe instead of nine inning games, they could be a seven inning game. Yeah. Right. Keep them a little bit shorter. Yeah. Um, you have a coach or or manager has to be playing. And on maybe on a different team. But maybe on a different team, yeah. I mean, yeah. we could shuffle them around and do this kind of thing. Um, uh, we get the, the ladies involved, you know, so we can get the ladies' yeah. uh, softball teams because, you know, you got UH has a good softball team and, and, and get the yeah, ladies cool. involved so that they, they're part yeah. of what's going on in, in this and how they get interjected into the, into the, into the games themselves. Um, Old-timers? Yeah. That'd have, be great. That's, old you bring some of the old timers back yeah. and get get them um, playing in some of the innings and so on. 
and you know and maybe you could even bring in some of the sports casters oh yeah or the sports writers yes you know and you know here's your inning you're going to be a pinch hitter you know for oh this. you just gave me another idea so didn't you used to umpire i did and didn't yeah. you umpire with jim Leahy. jim Leahy? yeah oh my god and pal eldridge wow jim pal and i <laughs> It was, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Guest umpires. <laughs> That'd be great. You know, oh, yeah. if you knew here the heckling for the... Uh, for oh, the, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and and maybe, maybe you have to put the umpire out, you know, on first base. Yeah. You know, something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, it could just be... I, I mean, yeah. you could do, again, you could turn this into just you a continually... You could have four outfielders. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the outfielders is going to be... Someone who's not, a, you know, not normally a player. Not normally a player. Yeah. Um, the other things is he could have is, oh, you could throw politicians in there. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, man, bad idea. Let's take that one out. Yeah. Eh, bad idea. Uh, oh, the losing politician. Oh, that's even a worse idea. Bad, bad. <laughs> It'd be a lot. <laughs> there wouldn't, oh, be, there wouldn't yeah. be many Republicans. There'd be a whole team of losing politicians. <laughs> there wouldn't be many Republicans. There's not that many that run. Wouldn't have it, yeah. <laughs> now, if you do it in the general, then all the Republicans would be out there. Yeah. <laughs> <We'd> <laughs> That's be, where it would have to be. That's the only way they could get a team, <laughs> field a team. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could oh, have the Republicans and the Democrats as the umpires, yeah. and then they could question a call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that means. Oh, so, but again, gosh. you can see yeah. the, the, the kinds of fun that we well, can. Yeah, and if here's if if the call got questioned, maybe we could have a Supreme Court judge come in <laughs> to you know to determine. Or the, the Attorney the General question. or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because because now we're getting stupid. Yeah. Well, not like not, it's not it's like, like we're getting it's, where it's just happening, but yeah. <laughs> but see, the, the the whole point of this weekend, I'm going to come back to this again, is we don't we, we don't have the the Pro Bowl anymore. No. Um, we have we have the um, the high school um, football, football, which brings team, yeah. you know brings all kinds of families together. Yeah. Um, my wife and I went to the uh, uh, Wahine softball championships. There you go. Um, yeah. High school championships. Well, Wahiwa versus Punahou. Um, uh, last year, and oh my goodness, what a wonderful day we had! I mean, yeah. it was an evening game, and just the the camaraderie and the rivalry and everything that went on there was just. And this is one of the things that was kind of tweaking my idea, yeah. my head on this yeah. idea, just see how the the but, families were having fun with each other and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. And so, so, but you, you know, taking that 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 course, um, the other things we could think of, I thought of is like you know we could also have. Um, if you do it, if we could get less Murakami, um, each of the teams could have their own food booth. Yeah, because they do. They had the schools involved in the yeah. food booth. We imagine if the teams had their own food booths and they could, you know, That'd be they great. could have a chili cook-off. Yeah, chili and hot dogs. Hey, baseball and hot dogs. Oh, just dog. a hot yeah. dog. Yeah, right. Yeah, just a hot dog competition. That'd be great. Um, anything that and anything that would go along cracker those jacks. Lines. Cracker jacks. Do they even with, make cracker jacks They still jacks don't even make cracker jacks anymore. anymore. I, I think know. they do. I, I they hope do. they do. Um, but you know, and the, the sponsors that 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 could be um, brought on board to help um, f fund the event itself, yeah. be able to fund the players. You know, like UH Hilo being able to get over here, yeah. maybe discounted or somehow show us your baseball ticket, and you get a discounted yeah, you get airfare. Discount as you go or back, or you home, get yeah. something. You know, all the kinds of things that would help promote. The businesses yeah. in town. So now you're promoting local businesses. Again, you've got the families, you've got the rivalries, you've got the humor factor going in there. Yeah. Hey, we could get Jay out. There you go. Jay, I could see Jay as a, a catcher. <laughs> <laughs> we could get a ball by him. <laughs> I just, I just insulted the boss. Oh well. So our show, I'm sure it's our not show's the first down time. twice a month. Maybe down to once a month yeah. after this. Hey, no, once every other month. Yeah. Yeah. Or not at all. <laughs> or we have to pay. Um, uh, so, um, but just again. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, even you could have like the the uh, the school choirs come out at the seventh inning stretch. You know, and they could sing "Take Me Out to the, the Ball, ball game. game." Yeah, you know, see, and you could have a competition on that. Who could who would come up with the best? Yeah. You know, oh, the things the, like the that. best thing. Um, the, the you know the bands could get involved. Yeah. I mean, um, there could be all kinds of the the rallies and so on. I think, and I, I'm doing this based on experience. I meet a lot of tourists at the University of Hawaii baseball games, many from Australia. 
who no purposely come um, when they come to Hawaii during the baseball season. They go to watch the University of Hawaii baseball. They love the ambiance and everything there, and they yeah. really enjoy the game. And I, last year, last year, two separate occasions, I met two couples from Australia who were there for the weekend, uh, and they said, "Oh yeah, there's a number of us that come just for the games." So I think it would bring in the tourists yeah. would get in there. Yeah, we could get we could get. Uh, Mufi, head of the Hawaii Tourism and Lodging Association. Hey, yeah, you know, he, get, he loves stuff get him. Like he loves sports. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii venture, Hawaii venture capital. The Hawaii. Um, anyway, all the different tourism organizations yeah. that we have. We could even get Angus out there. We could have a we could have a puck a puppet. You know, kick get him on, to throw yeah. out the first pitch. There that would go. go by an inch and a half. <laughs> <laughs> he he can throw it to Jay behind the behind the plate. Behind the plate, perfect. Yeah. Jay, there's no way Jay would get hurt. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, anyway, it's just um, it's so. It's, let me tell you what's kind of happening. So Sam Moku, who is the acting director of um, HPU, what, yeah. HPU, who was supposed to be on the show today and had a head emergency come up, and he, he had to um, uh, not be able to, to make it. So we're going to get him back. Um, but he's he's actually kind of I think leading uh, leading the charge. And he's trying to get meetings with all the different athletic directors and so on. So um, I'll be meeting with him again, and we'll get him on the show, and maybe that'd we can get some great. legs with this. That yeah, that'd be great. And you know, fans here in Hawaii, you know, call call in or you know email in to hibachi talk at outlook dot com. Yeah. Send that. I'll Think start that, putting this yeah. together. Um, let us you know. Let, let us know. Let, Even you know what? Right. Right to the paper, you know, letter to the editor. Yeah, well, then yeah. you and I should do that. Yeah. Actually, you got time. <laughs> if you if you ghostwrite it, I'll sign it. Okay, there Maybe. you go. Maybe. I'll yeah. read it first. All right. So anyway, we we burned through the show, believe it or not. It's, it's, it's yeah. already done. We, um, you and I always have a bunch of chuckles together. Thanks again. Hey, it's always great to be have, here with you, Gordon. We haven't seen you for so a while, fun. so yeah. um, safe travels. Yeah. Um, We'll be back at the end of the month. So we have to get redirected on how to find this place. I was lost. <laughs> where it's at. Anyway, Gordo the Tech You're Texar. always lost. I'm always lost. That's true. Gordo the Tech Star here with Ibachi Talk and with my good old buddy, Rick's the Funmeister. It's always a pleasure, buddy. Thanks, always a Gordo. Father. Always a fun, fun time, son. <laughs> okay, Dad. Okay. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. You remember? How, how are you, you doing? doing?